What's up, everybody? It's Bad Force Tom here again. Um, sorry about the lack of updates and uh, not too many videos up on the channel since I started. Um, no excuses, just uh, life got in the way. Wasn't really putting up anything interesting. Hadn't really picked anything interesting up, but I'm back and uh, you can rest assured that uh, updates are going to come much more frequently. Uh, renaming the channel to the Bad Force so that way it's kind of more of an over gen just general uh, for the Bad Force. It's not no longer just my personal account. This account's going to be in accordance with everything Bad Force. So if you follow us on Instagram, check us out at the Bad Force on Instagram, at Twitter, uh, at the underscore Bad Force. Uh, check us out on Snapchat, the Bad Force. Uh, and then always please check out our podcast on iTunes at uh, the, or I'm sorry, on iTunes, uh, Bad Force Radio, and also on SoundCloud, Bad Force Radio. <clears throat> so, uh, as you can see, I've uh, kind of uh, set up some risers in my office uh, on the desk. Everything looks real nice and sharp. Um, if you follow me on uh, Instagram, on my personal account, you might have seen um, that I also did this in one of my Detolf cabinets. But essentially what I did is I went on down to the Target. Um, you guys can find them at Walmart, but I got some of these acrylic risers um, not acrylic, it's plastic, what am I saying? One of these clear plastic risers, they're used for like salt shakers and um, spice racks. It's a, basically a spice rack for the kitchen. But that's what I put, that's what I use for these guys to essentially kind of bring them up and make them look like they're all standing in kind of like, uh, you know, stadium style. But it really kind of saves on space, it makes it look nice. I'll pan out a little bit so you can see kind of what it looks like. But yeah, it really saves on space when you got some loose figure action going on. But um, there that is. But today is not about that. Uh, today is about a couple of different things. First and foremost, I will get to the book in the back. Um, but I did want to bring our attention. Let me get set up here. All right, so sorry about that. Uh, I'm just trying to get set up and make it look a little bit better. But I wanted to bring your attention to two things. I'll get to the book in the back. But first, the release of this beauty. Um, just this week, the DC Icons Harley Quinn uh, figure came out, and um, let me just look at her, man. She is easily one of the best uh, Harley figures to ever come out. Um, comes with the mallet, she comes with her gun, that classic Harley look. Uh, she comes with, a com comes with a few swap out hands, as you can see. Three, actually, I think, I believe, maybe four, but I only have um, those at hand. But as you can see, she's a gem, man. Absolute gem of a figure. Extremely posable. Um, she's got the classic Harley look, again, like I said. My favorite Harley look. And she's just, I mean, the best. She's so good. I mean, they had a couple of the um, DC Universe Mattel figure Harleys, which were really good. They had a couple of them. That one of them was kind of like the Alex Ross look with the Joker that they did. Um, they've done a couple of others, but this one is very much in that vein. Um, I know people have complained that the DC Icons um, line is a little bit smaller than, you know, they're not standard 6 inch, they're I think 4.75, or maybe a little bit taller than that, so they're smaller. Um, let me see if I can get, let me just grab this guy. This guy's uh, DC Direct Batman, so he's a what? Oh damn, he's, is he a 7 inch? Either way, you can see a definite difference in the size and uh, you know how they make the figures and the scale. But the DC Icons line is a smaller scale. And people originally, you know, they were upset because they only came out with the first wave, which was, I think, Green Arrow, Batman, Flash, I think, Mr. Miracle, Blue Beetle, Green Lantern. A couple of guys came out and people were like, I can't use this with any of my other figures. They don't, they're not the scale. Um, but I don't think they knew how many of the, how many waves are actually gonna come out. There's a bunch of these figures coming out in this scale. Uh, I don't mind it. I like it. I like the smaller scale. Um, they're extremely posable, extremely um, articulated, and she's beautiful, man. So, like I said, a gorgeous piece. Um, you can get her at shopdcentertainment.com or at your local collectibles store or your local comic shop. They should have her. Um, but she just came out this week, and I love her, man. I'll put a picture of her by herself right here that I took right now. As you can see, she looks beautiful. Uh, by herself in that shot that I used in a diorama shot and also another shot right here right now that I used with the Batman icons figure and um, together they just look amazing I totally kind of copied the um, Arkham City promo poster I believe it is where the two where she's kind of chewing out Batman like that 
But um, yeah, so again, you know, she is just an absolute gem of a figure. I'm super happy with her. Uh, the DC Icons line I love, and uh, she's one of those reasons. Um, like I said, you know, we're going to be, um, I'm going to be updating this YouTube, and the Bad Force will be updating this YouTube more frequently, specifically because, can't really say right now, but there's something in the works that I'm really excited for that um, it's not 100% ironed out yet, but uh, if it does get ironed out, it's going to be amazing and awesome, and it's really going to kind of open up what we do on this YouTube channel, so you guys might want to check that out. Keep, uh, keep checking us out in the next couple of weeks for that announcement. But enough of the DC Icons Harley. Um, on to this book. Now, it's obviously very much related to the DC Icons Harley because Harley Quinn, as many of you know, was created by uh, writer Paul Dini and artist Bruce Timm for the animated series. And she was later written into the uh, Batman Adventures comic uh, line. And then she basically just became canon. She's just a canon character now. Um, she comes up in a lot of, she has her own, she has, she's had her own title a few times. She has her own title right now, which I think next to Batman is probably the highest selling title at DC Comics. Um, but that's all because Bruce Timm and Paul Dini sat down one day and decided they wanted to give Joker a girlfriend. And they came up with Harley Quinn. And um, anyhow, so Paul Dini, one half of the creative uh, geniuses behind the creation of Harley Quinn. Um, he's responsible for, you know, just uh, this guy's, his face is going to be on the Mount Rushmore of Batman. I mean, uh, he's written for the animated series, which is probably best known for. He wrote part of Mask of the Phantasm. Um, he wrote both Arkham, uh, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, the stories for those games he wrote. Um, he's written for numerous comics. He's written for television um, and uh, a lot of different television shows. Um, and most recently, he came out with this, A Dark Knight, A True Batman Story Under the Vertigo Imprint. Uh, with artist Eduardo Rizzo, who's awesome. You probably know him from some other Batman stuff that he's done. Really popular artist. But essentially, uh, what's cool about this book is it's it not it, nothing's really been done like this before. It's kind of a Batman story, but not. And it's a Batman story that's come out on the vertical imprint, which I don't think has ever been done before. Um, but essentially what it is, it's um, the story of the writer, Paul Dini himself, in the 90s at the height of the animated series. I believe they were in there first or second season, right as they were going to start writing Mask of the Phantasm, he got mugged and he got jumped bad and beaten, the, you know, they beat the crap out of him. And that's him kind of in the cover right there. And you see Joker and Batman kind of over his shoulders. And um, it was a life-changing experience, kind of an eye-opening experience, a near-death experience for him because of how scared and how serious the incident was. The guys essentially told him that they were going to kill him. And, uh, that he was going to die and he believed it and everything that comes with the near-death experience he experienced it he had some PTSD you know he almost quit writing he almost didn't want to write Batman anymore and at the time you know he was writing in the 90s so he still had some of his best stuff to come out so thank god he didn't stop but what's cool about the story is you know it's a Batman story but it's more about him and his story of getting beaten up um, what that was like and kind of persevering through it and how Batman and all these characters in the DC universe when he was writing for Warner Brothers when he was writing for Warner Brothers television for the animated series these characters were kind of what helped him get out of that space out of the negative space out of the depression out of the PTSD that he was experiencing um, they really kind of pushed him and helped him to kind of get back on his feet and it's amazing man it's a story that's not been done before with with this kind of uh, this kind of idea as far as DC Comics is concerned um, you know, it's a story about him, so it's a auto, it's an autobiographical story that he's taught, telling you about. It shows you him working in the DC Comics, or I'm sorry, the Warner Brothers Animation Department. It shows you his process a little bit, shows you a little bit of his history with his family, and it shows you how Batman influences him. And, and as he's going forward in the events of his life, you see Batman and the other characters kind of coming and going and having this influence and kind of representing other people in his life. And it's just an amazing story. And um, you know, it's probably one of my favorite stories that I've ever read, for sure, in the last couple of years. Uh, probably one of the best, my favorite Paul Dini stories ever. And it's because it's so different, it's because it's so refreshing. Um, it's just, you guys have to, have to, have to check it out. If you're a fan of the animated series, if you're a fan of Paul Dini, if you're a fan of anything he's ever done, this is something you need to check out. Um, it's extremely personal, it's extreme, I mean, he's putting his heart on the paper, he's showing you his flaws. 
he talks about who he thought he was at the time and how he was just kind of living this lifestyle that he just thought would make him happy and it wasn't really making I mean he's super vulnerable in this and it's not something that is common for a writer to do on a Batman story um, so you know thumbs up hats off to him Paul Dini's just an amazing writer and this is just like next level man honestly um, Mark Hamill has sung its praises Kevin Conroy has sung its praises um, Neil Gaiman has come out and talked about it so uh, a lot of people are talking about this book it's gonna win some awards for sure and I highly recommend it so I know that I've normally done figures and stuff like that but I wanted to spotlight this book um, because it is so important it is so good uh, and I definitely urge you guys to go check it out so oh and another thing by the way we actually the Bat Force uh, spoke to him and his wife for about two and a half hours on our podcast and I'll link that in the description so you can check it out but he goes into some heavy detail about the process of writing the story and uh, he tells us all about it and it's definitely worth listening uh, once you read it you know check out our podcast um, he tells you all about the process of it he tells you where the influence came from um, like I said I'll link that in the description so you guys can check it out and of course thank you for supporting the podcast thank you for supporting the page um, but again yeah just wanted to give you guys a little bit of heads up on that Harley icon figure and then also on this amazing story that is my friggin pick of the month pick of the you know quarter or whatever pick of the year this book's amazing man it really 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 touched me and um, anyone that's gone through any kind of adversity anyone that's kind of gone through a horrible experience that they feel like just wipes them out this book is kind of inspiration to show you that you can come out of it on the other side in a positive light and um, that's what this book did it, it kind of just shows you that there's Batman in all of us there's there's a hero in all there's there's someone inside of us that is greater than what we think we can be and as long as you just tap into that and allow it to kind of overcome you and over overcome the adversity uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel so again guys I just wanted to give you a heads up on that and uh, again thanks for checking out the channel we're gonna have a lot more updates coming along probably at least twice a month if not once a week um, check us out on Instagram at the Bat Force. Check us out at uh, Twitter at the underscore Bat Force. And again, check out the links in the description for our podcast. Um, so thanks so much, everybody. Check out the book. Check out the Harley icons. Uh, let me know what you think in the description after you after, in the comments. Read the book. Leave some comments if you've already read it. Um, if you got any questions, comment comment away. And uh, I'll see you guys out there. All right, Bat Force Tom, over and out.